Good evening and welcome home to Holy Cross on this special liturgy on the Maundy Thursday in Holy Week. This day receives its name from the Mandatum, or New Commandment, given by our Lord. At the Last Supper, Jesus washed his disciples' feet and commanded them to live and serve one another as he had done. This service has been called a burst of sunshine in the gathering gloom. We have once remembered the joy of the institution of the Holy Eucharist, the love and service which Jesus lived and taught. But then we recall the agony in the Garden of Gethsemane and the betrayal leading to crucifixion. Thus, tonight's service is rife with meaning and opportunities for reflection. As the service nears completion, the church's main altar, symbolic of Christ, is stripped of all its vesture, and the building is left bare in preparation for the rich solemnity of Good Friday. Again, good evening. Welcome home to Holy Cross, and let us worship God. Instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. 
mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Scripture. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is a portion of Psalm 116, prayed responsively as noted in bold type. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that this hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put in, into the heart of Judah's son of Simon Iscariot to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strong rock and our redeemer. Amen. Welcome to Holy Week at Home. There is a sorrow in my heart knowing that we are not gathered together at the sanctuary for tonight's service, my favorite service of the entire Christian calendar. The foot washing ceremony has always been for me the most profound and moving service we offer, specifically due to the vulnerability it requires of all who participate. But we find ourselves in a moment when we must stay away from public spaces and remain confined to one place. We are in the midst of a global crisis, a trauma on a scale many of us have never experienced before. And so in a way, we are in a unique position to enter into this week with a different understanding than ever before. Our lessons from scripture point us towards remembrance in tonight's service. The passage in Exodus gives the commandment to observe the Passover, make, marking the deliverance of the Israelites from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. This will be a day of remembrance for you, God says. In 1 Corinthians, Paul provides us with the words of institution that you will hear later in the Eucharist. Do this in remembrance of me. 
This commemorates the night that Jesus and his disciples celebrated the Passover before his death on the cross, which we call the Last Supper. And in John's Gospel, we witness Jesus washing the feet of his disciples before giving a new commandment to follow and remember. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. What we are being asked to remember, however, are the eventual positive outcomes of extremely traumatic narratives. In the Passover story, God tells the Israelites to sacrifice a lamb and put the blood on their doorposts and lentils. Then they are told to stay inside and wait. God passes over the houses with blood on them, but in the houses of the Egyptians, the houses without the blood, the firstborn is killed. Imagine the cry that must have rung out that morning upon the Egyptian family's recognition that their children are dead. The Israelites must have heard that pain, the mourning, the suffering. And then they were led out of Egypt, away from the home that they knew. Can you imagine the kind of trauma that must have been? To survive all that they had endured, to live beyond the extent that you had thought possible. In the Passion story, we walk with Jesus and his disciples through Jesus' arrest, trial, and execution. He dies and is buried, and then he is resurrected. But before that resurrection is the trauma and suffering of the death itself, and the witnessing of that death. And it is this suffering that we cannot allow ourselves to forget or avoid in the effort to get to the hope of the resurrection. That is why the ceremony of washing one another's feet is so powerful this night. This act allows us to remember the suffering and trauma while also practicing that commandment to love. We enter into our own brokenness and vulnerability and have the opportunity to enter into another's brokenness and vulnerability. When we kneel at the feet of another, take their feet into our hands and look into their eyes for a moment, we cannot not be transformed. In kneeling, we develop a posture of humility and compassion that is necessary for recognizing the vulnerable within our midst. We cannot touch another person in an act so intimate as this one and leave without somehow feeling changed. This is a transformative practice that allows us to face our suffering and see it in others without shying away from the discomfort we experience as a result of it. Our feet have stories. They have carried us to many places. They bear the weight of our bodies. They have scars. They may be missing parts or may be altogether gone. They have experienced trauma. They carry our traumas, and in this moment, for just a moment, we are privileged enough to hold those feet, to hold that trauma in our own hands. This requires trust. It requires relationship, and it requires love. We have been practicing the love of staying in one place. For those of us who live with others, this can be a trying time, with energy and patience for each other potentially waning. This practice is an opportunity to remember the vulnerability and the humanity of the others in your midst. Take the time to really be present in washing each other's feet. For those of us who live with animals, perhaps take the time to wash the paws or hooves of that animal, giving thanks for the companionship and the vulnerability of that creature of God for loving you. And for those of us who are alone, take the time to wash your own feet, grounding yourself in that love that Jesus calls us to, which extends to ourselves as well. Once we have finished washing feet, we will move towards the Eucharist, practicing that act of remembrance that we as Episcopalians partake of each week, 
a remembrance of a narrative of trauma that commemorated another narrative of trauma in the Passover. Having taken on the postures of serving in humility and sitting in honor, seeing in the midst of it the discomfort, the vulnerability, and the suffering that we all share as a part of being human, we might experience the Eucharist in a new light. There is blood and suffering in both accounts of remembrance. The blood on the wood of the doorposts and the blood on the wood of the cross do not allow us to forget the reality that suffering occurs in the midst of redemption. Not merely as some necessary step on the way towards hope and progress. That blood did not disappear when the Israelites were led out of Egypt just as that blood did not disappear when Jesus was taken down off the cross. For some of us, the blood of our wounds remains, and we cannot merely wash it off with water. But we can sit in the space in between, where the blood and the water are both life and death intermingled, signifying different things in different moments. As we continue on in these uncertain times, I wonder what it is that we will remember after this pandemic ends. We will certainly remember the suffering and the pain, the trauma and the loss. But we might also find that we remember those acts of kindness, a phone call from someone you had not heard from in a long time, the family and friend gatherings on Zoom, seeking community and experiencing prayer in new ways. We will remember the love that we each felt for each other, longing to be together once again. And when that day comes, we will celebrate with thanksgiving. We will get through this. We have the privilege as Christians to understand our current trauma and react to it through the example of the narratives of trauma in our own tradition, where Jesus shows us that we are to respond with love. We know this is not the end of our story. So in the meantime, wash some feet, spread that love, and take the time to truly remember what we are celebrating when we come together in worship. I love you. fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. We all need to remember his example, but none stand more in need of this reminder than those whom the Lord has called to be ordained ministry. Therefore, I invite you, who share in the royal priesthood of Christ, to join with us in this virtual ceremony of washing one another's feet, that we may recall whose servant we are by following the example of our Master. And yet, as you participate with us, Remember his admonition that what will be done for you is also to be done by you to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. As we now pour water into the basin here in the church, we invite you to do the same at home and join with us in this brief um, responsive prayers as found on page five in your service leaflet. I give you a new commandment. 
Love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that we have love for one another. If I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, how much more ought you to wash one another's feet? Where true charity and love dwell, God himself is there. I invite you, whether you are by yourself, here at the church, or in homes with someone else, to stop and wash one another's feet as we sing Ubi Caritas. Prayers of the People The leader and people pray responsibly. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any illness, anxiety, grief, or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Please stand with me and join in singing the presentation hymn. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, 
presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Brother Styles, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. At this time the priests will receive the communion. And after receiving we will invite you to join with us in offering a prayer of spiritual communion. pray together. My Savior Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. I cannot now receive you sacramentally, and yet I join myself with all the faithful who in your holy church offer you this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Come spiritually into my heart, most blessed Redeemer. As you have indeed already come, I now embrace you once again and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer on page 366 in the Book of Common. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. I invite all present to be seated and join in the singing of the hymn, Go to Dark Gethsemane.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I'm a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised. By the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn, they curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him, let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I'm poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a pot shirt. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O oh Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations bow before him. For kinship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. 
My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Please kneel as you are able and sing with us the hymn of reflection, Stay With Me. 